Family Church. Tonight I'm going to open up a little different tonight. Um, this is a book that I've had for quite a while, and um, it's a, a daily decree, bringing your day into alignment with God's prophetic destinies by Brenda Kuhneman. And I've been declaring words every day over this congregation, many words. Oh, Thank you. So, it says that when we speak faithful words aloud into the atmosphere, those words go into effect. In fact, declared words, when they are based on God, on Bible promises, also cause angels to go into effect, yeah. or in action, I should say. Um, so Psalms 91.5 says, Do not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. So, okay. Uh, Today I declare that you are covered by God's mighty and angelic angels and delivered from every arrow of the enemy. I declare no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I declare that every diabolic scheme, plot, and plan of the enemy is stopped and interrupted by warring angels and God's power. Yes. And every attack must fall to the ground. I declare that we are delivered from the terror by night and the arrow that flies by day. Every pestilence that walks in darkness around is stopped. I declare that no witchcraft, curse, no demonic spell, no work of divination, incantation, X will have any effect on you and is rendered entirely powerless in the authority of Jesus' name. Yes. Right now, I declare that every attack is replaced with peace and calm. I declare blessing overtakes you and brings all chaos into divine order. Yes. I declare that we dwell in safety, for the Lord is our refuge. Angels are bearing us up in their hands this day, and long life and salvation are upon us.
Andrabori and the Rabosha Hakia. Hallelujah! 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 Glory, 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 glory to the King, glory to the King. Hallelujah! You are holy. We're in your presence today, oh God. We stand in your presence and we worship you. We worship you. We tell you, Lord, we love you tonight. We love you tonight, oh God. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. No shanaburi at the rabasso. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hosa. Hosa. Lord, you are good, you are good, and you are holy. Lord, you said that be ye holy, as I am holy, so we thank you, Lord, that we can be like you, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for holiness, Lord God, purity, righteousness, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that uh, all of these things are available to us to walk in and live in, Lord God. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that has cleanses us, Father God. Of all of the stains of the world uh, that would try to accumulate on us, we thank you, Lord, for the blood that washes us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, it forgives us. It makes us holy. It makes us holy. Your holy blood applied to us but cause us to be holy, too. So we thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for it, Lord. Lord, you're good. You're good, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. You're good. Thank you. Sitara Rabuste Bete Ishumbongi Ganda Brahmabusha Kutara Tabata Rabakata Kasu Jamba Robo Kusha Kusha Kata Rabati Kesakara I started to hear them sitting back there. So. whisper, every whisper that you whisper from your heart, I hear, every shout, every shout that comes from your heart, I hear, I long for you to come to me, come to me with your heart and lay down your sin, because I will take it, and it will go to the place of forgetfulness. Remember that. Remember that, my children. It is gone. Just come. 
come before me. You step into the holiness, and I am transforming you. Every time you come to me, I am transforming you. And then I call you to take that to the world. The world so needs me and you. I send you. I send you. Go. 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 You are my blessed people. Go. open your Bible tonight, and uh, let's turn to Acts chapter 20, let's start there. Verse 17, and from Eletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders the church, and when they were come to him, he said unto them, You know from the first day that I came into Asia, that after what manner I have been with you in all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears and temptations which befall me by the lying and weight of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly from house to house testifying to the Jews and also to the Greeks repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you, Lord, it's just sharper than a two-edged sword, Father God, and that it, uh, it just gets down into our hearts, Father God, that you speaking from your heart to our heart tonight, Lord God. We thank you that we have ears to hear, Lord God. We, we are uh, not dull of hearing tonight, but we have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to us in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 And verse 20 says, I kept nothing back that was profitable unto you. And those terms it's talking, it's a sailing term, and it means that ships in those days uh, would move primarily by sail. And what he was painting a picture of is that, that he had the say, his his spirit was like a sail, and he was whatever breeze would come, he could catch it, and that that breeze was a, a, a word from God. He said, "He said I kept nothing back from you that was profitable." So the spirit of God can say things to men and women, and it's for our profit. Okay, so what's that mean? What does it mean? You know, for our profit. Well, one, it could mean for things to go well. Okay, things that will give you an advantage, things that will put you over. Things that will bless you. Things that will help you. Okay? And so that's a profit that, that you and I have. Uh, it's not like a, a profit of the Old Testament or New Testament, but it's a profit like, you know, you have a profit. And so the things that the Spirit of God says to us, uh, these things are, you know, if we have our sails up and we, we are listening, we can hear what the Spirit of God is saying. I was coming into church, uh, I think it was, must have been Thursday or Friday, and uh, just coming in, spending some time just praying on the way in, and and, and I hope I heard the Holy Spirit say this to me, and uh, it was just very simple. We've already heard it before. He says, uh, "Take care of my business, and I'll take care of your business." And uh, uh, it was it was very you know very firm in my spirit when. You know, it was just, just there, take care of my business, I'll take care of your business. And uh, I took that as a word for myself, but then uh, as we got into the office, we have a staff meeting every morning, and then we have a time of prayer with, with uh, those that are here. And uh, uh, we got to praying, and I said, well, that, that, that's just not for me. I said, that, that's for other people. And I said, you tell so-and-so. I said, that's a word from the Lord for them. And uh, as we talked more about it and mentioned it, uh, uh, other people started coming and saying, well, the Lord told me the same thing. It's basically the same day. Mm -hmm. So we find that the, the Spirit of God was saying something uh, to us. And it wasn't just for me, uh, but uh, again, these are things that are for our profit. If we want to profit in the things of God, 
then we need to we need to hear what the Spirit is saying. And so uh, he just said, I have kept back nothing that was profitable unto you and have showed you and taught you publicly and from house to house. So when we go over to Luke chapter 2, we find uh, this story here, which is uh, uh, one we're all quite familiar with. Jesus is 12 years old. And uh, it says in verse 41, it says, Now uh, his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, uh, he went to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. You know, the, when you think about it, it, it said that uh, uh, they went to Jerusalem every year. So they, they took Jesus with them. You know, Jesus had been in Jerusalem at least 30 times before he, you know, was anointed uh, to walk in the office that he was walking in. So, to, you know, as, as our Savior, he was 30, 30 different times. And so he, this is one of the times that he was 12 years old. And when he was 12 years old, he went uh, up to the up to Jerusalem. I was like, that. Uh, I never paid too much attention to that until I saw where someone said, did you ever notice that, that uh, it says, they always write, he went up to Jerusalem. Yep. Jerusalem was up, yeah. not down. Everything with God is is up, okay? You, we go up. We're going up to church. We're not going down to church. We're going up to church. We're going. We're going up to praise. We're going up to worship. And so he was going up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew it not. But they supposing him to have been in the company when a day's journey and saw him among their kinfolk and acquaintances. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass, after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. Now, you just, when we think about that, it must have been a pretty good-sized company they were traveling with. I mean, it wasn't five or six people, or they would have noticed that Jesus was it with them. It must have been a pretty good-sized company of people with, with the teenagers and you know children, and and it probably was customary for the kids all to just kind of band together and and you know kick kick dust balls down the road, whatever they were doing, <laughs> just just having fun. And and come evening time, uh, when it was time for supper, and they're calling Jesus for come and get something to eat. It's time to, you know, maybe think about your head for bed. They can't find you. And so if you're any kind of a parent, what would that do to your heart? All of a sudden, I mean, do you, if suddenly you realize he's not there. He never was in the group. They're checking with everybody. Hey, did you see Jesus? No, he wasn't with us today. Have you seen Jesus? Have you seen Jesus? No, no, we haven't seen him. The terror that must have gripped them. No matter, you know, it doesn't matter what the angel said to him. Uh, uh, 12 years earlier, it grips your heart. You know, what's wrong? Something's wrong. Yeah. Something's terribly wrong. And so they they turn and they race back to Jerusalem, and then it's three long days and nights. The worst of your fears are, are gripping you. What's happened to our boy? You know, there's unsavory people. There, there's bad people around. You know, what has happened to him? You know, God, I thought you said, you know, I'm sure they're saying that God, I, I thought you said, I was convinced you said that he was, you know, he was the Messiah and everything. And now he's disappeared and, and we don't know where he is. I'm sure they were crying and seeking and asking everywhere. <clears throat> and it says that, uh, and it came to pass, verse 46, after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, that's Mary and Joseph, they were amazed. And finally, they, they come and you know, apparently somebody says, yeah, he's over there in the temple. So they go over there, and he's got an audience of the people all sitting around him, asking notes, taking notes, asking questions, and he's, he's there going back and forth with them. And they, they, they were all astonished uh, at his understanding and his answers. Twelve-year-old boys normally don't have a lot of common sense, okay? 
I, I think I can remember being 12 years old. Right? And my, the biggest priority in my life was that it didn't rain so I could pitch baseball for our team, school team. And uh, that was that was the, the, the biggest thing in my life. And uh, uh, But here was Jesus talking. He was listening and then he would ask them questions. And, and he, the questions were such that that they were they were astounded because then he'd have to give them the answer, <clears throat> and they, they they were doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions, and all they heard of were astonished at his understanding and his answers. But when they saw him, they were amazed, and his mother said unto him, "Son, why have you dealt with us or done this to us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing." And he said unto them. How is it that you sought me? Wisdom, knew you not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. They did not grasp what he said. It was a little bit too deep. Okay, let's pray tonight. It's not a little bit too deep for us. Okay? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And, and he went down with them to Nazareth and was subject unto them, but his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Hallelujah. Well, here, here's a question. It's not for the live stream people, but they can listen in. Uh, was Jesus God? Yes. Was Jesus God? Of course he was God. But how can God increase in wisdom? How can God increase in wisdom? Well, again, we have to understand Kathleen was partly right, partly wrong. We're not going to talk about the partly wrong part of Kathleen. But Jesus, he, he said he was the Son of God, but he was also the Son of Man. So the humanity part of Jesus had to grow and increase. The Bible says that, that God never sleeps nor slumbers, yet Jesus fell asleep on the ship. Okay. But it was the humanity part of, of Jesus that it's really talking about, okay? And so he grew in wisdom and knowledge, it says, and he grew in stature, too. He just, he developed. And, uh, and he says that he was obedient to his mom and, and, and to his father. It says, let me read a little different translation for you. The NIV says, why were you searching for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? And most most translations read that way. Didn't you know I, I, I must be in my father's house? And so he had this passion to be in the house of God, the temple of God. Hallelujah. Okay. The NIV says, uh, uh, the, the Passion Bible, let me go to the Passion Bible. Jesus said to them, uh, why, why would you need to search for me? Didn't you know that it was necessary for me to be here in my Father's house, consumed with him? Wow. Didn't you know that I, ha I would have to be in my Father's house, consumed with him? And so we, we can see some things that uh, when he said, I must be about my father's business, I'm, I'm saying this to you. You need to be about your father's business. Yes. This is a word for all of us, not just me, not just a few. This is a word to our whole congregation mm -hmm. that you, we, we need to be about my father's business. You and I, uh, we have business to do, business to conduct. And Jesus said that this business that he had was a consuming business. It would consume him. The Bible says, I think it's over in John, Gospel of John chapter 1 or 2, it says that, that they remember that it was the zeal of that house that had consumed him. It was the zeal of, of, of his, the house of God that, that turned the Jews to hate him so much. Because they said that he'll, he's going to take us and we'll lose our place. Uh, every man will turn to him and we're going to lose our place. They weren't concerned about the father's business. They were concerned about their own business. 
And so what he's saying is, if, if, if you will take care of my business, I will take care of your business. And so instead of you and I having to be so consumed with our business, if we would get more consumed with his business. It's how easy it is to get consumed with, with things on the outside. I mean, you know, uh, there, there's a, I remember living next door to a guy that, and uh, he golfed quite a bit. And, and he said to me one day, he was going out and, in Oklahoma, and taking his golf clubs with me. He said, uh, I golf 360 days a year. Well, that kind of consumes you. That, that's a consuming thing. But Jesus, his walk, he wanted to, he was so, wanted to be so close to his father. And he said, I, I need to be about my father's business. You all, all of us have been given some business to do, all right? There's not a person here listening that none of our congregation, there's things that you are supposed to be doing for the kingdom of God. That's God's business. Now, there's a number of things, not just one thing. One of the things that is his business is, is us worshiping. That's being, that's being about the Father's business, worshiping Him, praying, you know, uh, uh, magnifying Him and glorifying. That's part of the Father's business. And we need to be busy about the Father's business, whatever it is. And my business is to, to teach the Word of God and to preach and then, and then to, to live for the Lord and to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Et j'en prends un bon vision de nom de mon gitan, de probe qui se bon gitan, de prendre de la mon chivon de rein. J'ai barré de bouteille qui se cante, ramavant, se caravant, et tout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, down in my spirit, I could hear these words. For I've called you. I've called you to do my business. I've called you with a calling that's higher than anything else. I've called you unto me. I've called you for I have purchased you. I have redeemed you. I have saved you. I have delivered you. And I've given you a job to do. I've given you a commission to do. And I desire that you would be busy about seeking me, busy about my business. For I do say unto you, if you take care of the things I've called you to do, then I'll take care of the things that concern you so that you won't have to be concerned about them. So your focus can be upon me and not upon yourself and all of your needs. So focus upon me, saith the Lord. Even be consumed with me, saith the Lord. And I'll take care of everything else. Then you'll not have to be concerned. And you'll look back and say, the Lord has done great things for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, these things become profitable to us. These things become profitable to us. Hallelujah. We were praying this morning, and uh, Pastor Nelly was praying, and, and uh, 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 the Holy Spirit gave me a revelation this morning. And uh, and so I, I have usually I have paper right there, so I, while people are praying, I write things down. And uh, if you want to turn over to uh, Hebrews 13, let's look there for a moment. Hebrews 13. Verse 7. Remember them that have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation or their manner of living. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your soul, as they that must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For this is unprofitable for you. And so while Pastor Nelly was praying, all of a sudden I, I had a revelation. Because these are scriptures that a lot of people just, it's like a burr under the saddle of some people. This submitting to 
leadership, submitting to a pastor, somebody having rule over you. Nobody's got rule over me, pastor. Well, when you see it in the, in the light that, that God showed it to me, when what I saw was that when you are in submission to leadership in the church, primarily a pastor, of course, you give him the right to do battle with the demonic forces over your life. Amen. You give him permission Glory. to go and he doesn't because you see you don't always have permission with everybody. Glory. But see when you when they when, when you submit to the rule, all of a sudden you I have I have the, the legal Glory. the legal authority now to go in and deal with the demonic things that are attacking you and your family. I never seen that before ever. Glory. Submit yourself to them. Why? You think, well, they're going to tell me what to do. No, you've given them permission to pray, to come in, to into your 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 spiritual life and help you. Glory. Not tell you what to do, but to to do battle for you and to, to fight for you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Remember them that have the rule over you. It's not to tell you you can buy a car or what color your suits you should wear or what color socks you should have. It's not that. There's people that take it and they, they take that into the ditch. It's just, you say, well, you know, uh, I, when I was my first church, people would introduce me. Uh, this is the preacher at the church that I go to. Uh, this is the man who speaks at our church. And one day, Ernie Schreffler, uh, he'd been going through some problems and I was there for him. He was my praise and worship leader. And he introduced me and said, this is my pastor. This is my pastor. And I always remember that I wasn't everybody's pastor, even though they were coming to church. Even though they were sitting there, they're, you're not everybody's pastor. Well, I'm, I'm going to take care of myself. I don't need anybody. Well, according to this, you do. It's not that you're not, you're not going to go and meddle in people's lives or anything like that. But, but what you have is... Is, is I can't tell you how many times at 2, 3 in the morning I've been up praying for people in the congregation, lifting them up, praying, and, and, and interceding for them over the years. <clears throat> Seems like 2, 3 in the morning is the time you're just, you're just up for some reason. I don't know what it is. But uh, it's just, just praying for people. And, but if, if, if I'm their pastor and they, and they you know, are submitted to that. All I, it's just I have authority now. Remember it says over in, in, in First uh, Corinthians chapter 7, it says that if, you're, if you have an unbelieving husband and, and a believing wife, it says it's like there's an umbrella that's over the, the husband. Okay? If there's a believing husband and an unbelieving wife and she's pleased to stay, there's like an umbrella that's over them of, of, of a type of protection and grace. It says, and then if, if you have unbelieving children, uh, there is a grace and protection that is over them. Why? Because God, God had, wants to have ways for people to be able to pray and minister to those people. Okay? And so it's the same thing. If there, there's a, like a, a, some type of a, of a covering that is here in a sense. That when you come and you say, this is my church and, and, and this is my pastor. And, and a lot of people, that's hard for people to say that. But see, but, but if you don't, then, 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 then you're not going to get the benefit of what God can do for you. Remember, it, what did it say? Let's, let's go back to it. It says, for this is unprofitable to you. So, you know, God, God wants you to profit. So things can be unprofitable to you. Hallelujah. I always do that one in for free. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mark 13, let's go over there. Mark 13. Now we, we're, uh, Friday night is, is miracle night and as far as I don't know, I've, I've checked with the guest speaker and that's, apparently it's me. So uh, I'll, I'll be here Friday night. Sunday night is, uh, the prophet will be in the house with us electronically of course, live streaming, Brother Greg will be with us. So it's gonna be an awesome time. I was talking to him this, this morning. He said, I already got my message. I already got it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Mark 13. 
and is about the end times, of course. It's a whole chapter given to it. Verse uh, 31, but heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take heed, watch, and pray, for you know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work. Now notice that part. To every man, every woman, every person, to every man, every woman, his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch you therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh, at evening or at midnight or at cock crow or in the morning, lest come and suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. So you see that he says, I've given everybody something to do. So that you, you, you have some business that God is, has entrusted to you. And we, we realize that God has given us some business. Go to Ephesians for just a moment. I think it's Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. And it says, uh, let's start in verse 12, and verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets, and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. So who is supposed to do the work of the ministry? The saints. See, we, 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 we grew up believing that it was the, the pastor or evangelist, they were to do the work of the ministry. But no, we're to train people to do the work of the ministry. That's why we need apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. For the maturing, perfecting, maturing of the saints. So we're to help you grow up for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the building. Edifying means building up of the body of Christ till we all come into the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now see, some people will say, well, you know, uh, Brother Bankley, there's, uh, we don't believe in the office of the prophet that's passed away. The office of the apostle has passed away. Uh, we recognize the office of a pastor. We recognize the office uh, of an evangelist, uh, maybe maybe a, even a teacher. But it tells us how long these gifts are for, these offices. It says, verse 13, till we all come into the unity of the faith. We haven't got there yet. Right. So is so so. <laughs> These offices are still in effect. That's right. okay. Now the time will come. We won't need these things. I, when I get to heaven, I'm not going to be a pastor. We won't need pastors. Okay? The, the great shepherd will be there. Yes, sir. But down here, I'm an under-shepherd. I'm not the great shepherd. I'm the under-shepherd. Okay? Uh, till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a mature man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So we've got a ways to go that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness where they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up uh, into him in all things which is the head even Christ, from whom the whole body, that's the body of Christ, uh, fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies. Now here you're called a joint. You're a joint in the body of Christ, okay? And you have a supply. You have something that you supply to the body of Christ that no, nobody else can do and give the way you can do it. And when you understand that, okay, that you, you have, there's, there's things that you have that is, that's called the Father's business that has been deposited into you. And you can do the Father's business. In fact, you're going to have to give an account. <laughs> was I doing the Father's business or was I doing my thing? You'd be surprised how many people are out there doing their thing. And they're not doing the God thing, they're doing their thing. Hallelujah. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto edifying itself in love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 
We'll look at this a few more scriptures. First Corinthians chapter 9. Verse 16. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Woe is, is unto me if I preach not the gospel. There's, there's, there's some people that this is their their, 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 their uh, business. Woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. Woe unto me. Hallelujah. If I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have reward. If you do what God's call, calling you to do or laid before you to do, you say, well, I, I don't know what he's called me to do. Well, uh, what, what do you have the opportunity to do? What do you have opportunity to do? You know, sometimes you, you have the opportunity to come up here and open up the service. That's the Father's business. That's the Father's business. Okay. And so when we come, we, we, you know, we, you know, we're a church that is prepared in such a way that we're not prepared. Um, you could organize the anointing out of anything and everything. Yeah. You could organize it out. Yeah. And so we, we try not to organize the anointing out. Uh, I, I like things a little more on the spontaneous side. I know that brings dread into people's hearts. And when they say, well, the pastor says, well, you come up and do this. And it just, just brings dread. But uh, again, over if you, if you just trust the Lord, just yeah. trust the Lord. I know I met the other day, I just turned and I said, look, oh, Kathy, come on up here, we'll be able to hold it to her, we can't do the microphone, and she's looking at, well, what am I supposed to do? But then she just started praying, just, oh, man, just the presence of the Lord came in. I didn't know what she was going to do. I see, that's part of the, the business of the Father, okay? I must be about my Father's business. As he said, when, when, when you take, now coming to church is part of the Father's business. Now, how easy is, is it to stay home? I know there's times you have to. Uh, uh, we were in, in, in uh, Trachody, uh last Sunday, okay? And so we're, I'm looking Saturday night, I'm looking through the phone book to find a, a church, maybe a nice Word of Faith church, you know, a charismatic, Pentecost, even bad, I'd go, oh, Pentecostal, I'd go, you know. Yeah. All I could find was three Catholic churches and a Jehovah Witness church, and they all spoke French. So there was no place to go. So we just we just watched uh, on my phone, uh, iPhone, and we watched the service here. Okay? And it was it was awesome. It was awesome. I saw Miss Kathy open up and pow, 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 and woo, you're in for a time. Now, to be honest with you, know, the, the, I could sense and I could tell just from from the distance I was at that the praise and worship was very powerful. But I knew that it was nothing compared to being in this room. I could feel it, but yeah, I know it was a was hundred times stronger yeah. being here. Because I had people say, man, that was an awesome Sunday. It's an awesome, awesome. Well, I knew it was really, really good. But again, uh, the, but we're, you know, when it comes to the praise and worship, we're just, that's very good, yeah. They're all singing, dancing, shouting. And we're just, we're just watching. Yeah, you know, you know, we're just watching. Were, were you singing and dancing too? No, not in particular. <laughs> it's nothing like being here. I remember one time they, uh, uh, we couldn't find anybody to do the words, and it used to be pretty simple, so they even let me do the words a time or two. And so you're, you're back there in, in the where Krista's app, and you're having to put the words up on the screen. You know, you, you don't get to enter in like, like everybody else to quiet because you have to be concerned. What's, what's the next verse? What's the next, which one, where are they going, you know? And you got like six different things up there you got to look at. You got to get the right one really quick. Sometimes you get the wrong one up there. You got the wrong words. You got to get it back off. And so you really can't worship that way. Now, there's been a few times some of the people doing the words forgot about the words and just stood back there and they just worshiped. <laughs> Ten minutes go by, they got the same old words up there. <laughs> Just forget it. I'm just. I'm, I'm going to worship. I don't care. So, then that's all right. We want people to worship. But see, some some people's business 
There's, there are some people that are so gifted that just, just they can do a little something and it just breaks the service wide open. Just, you know, there's sometimes somebody will just take off a run, you know. And I've seen times that most running was done in the flesh. But then there was a time or two where, where the Spirit of God just came on somebody and, and it was the Spirit of God. Such a blessing. That's the Father's business. See, the Father's business is really is to build up the body. Somehow you're building up the body. Whether you're greeting at the door, that's the Father's business, okay? You may be out on the back there, you know, uh, tonight Jan was back there and she was greeting. And and she's she was about the Father's business, okay? And, you know, she was. And I was a seal does it quite a little bit. That's the Father's business. You say, well, that's, that's not really very important. It is if God puts you there. God wants you there. It, it is, there's rewards for that. There's profit for that. Because you do things willingly. You see, there's, the people do things for different reasons, and, and sometimes if your heart's not in it, I mean, you can do something, but your heart's not really there, and your heart's not in it. Uh, it don't, God sees that. I mean, you can, you, can, you can be talented and very, very, very talented. Some people don't know the difference between talent and anointing, but there is, God notices. There's a big difference. And so what I do here, I, I have a passion for it. I have a passion for it. It's not a job to me. It's a calling. Okay? And, and I'm not looking for something else. And every time I'd go away and play, they'd say, you aren't looking for another church, are you, Pastor? I'd say, no. You are coming. Promise you're coming back. I promise. Lady, I'm coming back. I really am. Why? Because this is, this is where I belong. I have shared this before, but when we, <clears throat> before I came here, I was in Pennsylvania, and um, I'd actually been out in Long Cliff ministering out there for my son Greg when he was there. And uh, a couple hours north of him is uh, Fort McMurray. And so uh, there were some people that had come down uh, for the meetings and from Fort McMurray. And so uh, after the meeting, they contacted me and talked to me and said, would you be interested? And in, we have a church of about 400 people. Would you be interested in possibly pastoring the church? And I said, well, Possibly. I said, uh, uh, how long have you been without a pastor? I said, we're not without a pastor. I said, well, is he leaving? He, he says, well, yeah, he, is. he just doesn't know it yet. And I said, he doesn't know you're down here? And they said, no, he doesn't know, but we, we were really interested in you. And I said, dude, don't be interested in me, because if they would do that behind his back, they'd do it behind my back. I said, forget it. Forget it. And so a couple of years went by, a year two went by, and we're up here now. We've we've gotten started. I got 13 people, rock hard, solid people. 13. I mean, and uh, the same group approaches me again, and they said the pastor's gone now. Would you be interested in this church in Fort McMurray? 400. Really good salary. Up there, where Greg is at, hunting like crazy, fishing like crazy. Oh boy. You talk about temptation. But I had 13 people, and I said, no, no. Because I had made a commitment here <coughs> to God. And I'm so glad I didn't go there. Why? Because, because I, was, I was busy about the Father's business. I'm still busy about his business. Sometimes you get kind of sidetracked with something, and have a <clears throat> Just get your attention, you know, just, just get back to this. It doesn't mean that you can't have fun, you know. It doesn't mean you can't do things. And in fact, I was actually invited to, to go uh, this weekend to go on a fishing trip, okay, and, and go with some people and other pastors and spend the night in, a, in an old cottage someplace and go fishing uh, for, for two days. And, and uh, I thought about it for a little bit. I thought, man, oh, that is tempting. But I, I, I said, I'll, I'll give me a little bit of time to think about it, and I'll, I'll get back to you. And I, I did. I texted him back. I said, thank you for the invitation, but no thank you. I just felt like I was supposed to be here. You know, you know it's, it's okay to go fishing. It's okay to have some time off. But you know what? My business is here. Okay, my, and, and, and you say, well, what about the fishing? Well, God will take care of that. 
not take care of it. Somebody will bring me some trout. Oh. Yeah, well, I, I believe it. I, I don't, I don't moose. Yeah, I don't know. People on the camera can't hear this. I don't moose hunt. But I pray moose in. And I pray venison in. I pray it in. Sometimes I have more moose than, than most people. I prayed moose and somebody even gave me some bear steak, so. Do you eat it? Huh? Do you eat it? It hit the spot. It hit the spot. Woe unto me. Say that with me. Woe unto me. If I do not do my father's business, you need to hear that. Woe unto me if I don't do it. Why? Is he going to get me? No, but the blessings aren't going to be there that she would normally have. The things will be more of a struggle. Things will be more difficult. Why? The Bible says that uh, sacrifice is, 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 is better than obedience. Well, I'll do it. You know, you might as well stay home. Well, I'll do it. You know. Sometimes there's a sacrifice to doing some things. You could do a lot of other things. I remember that uh, uh, we had some, some families that uh, they, a lot of times in the summer they, they couldn't be here on Sunday morning because their there's, there's, there's small kids were playing ball. And you know, it's, it's ball is fine. I like to play ball, but when you train and teach your children that that playing ball is really more important than church, you know, there, there's lessons that they learn. Okay, playing ball is a lot more fun than going to church, Pastor. I, I understand that, but in the long run, in the long run, there's the blessings that come that do, that we have to have. Jeremiah said, in Jeremiah. Uh, 20 verse 9 there, I said, there is a fire shut up in my bones. I think you'll find Pastor Brian can be acquainted well with that. There is a fire that is that is in his bones. You, you just have to. You know, there's a fire that's in our bones that, that I, I just want to be a church. I just want, I mean, we're, we're driving around looking for a church. You know, we're supposed to have some time off, a, a, you know, a few a few days off, and, and, and but my heart's in church. I can't, couldn't be here. Well, if I can't be here, let me find another one. And we couldn't find another one, so uh, we did. We were watching the, the live stream here. Hallelujah! Sunday morning and Sunday night, we watched it all. Hallelujah! Saw Miss Crip preaching Sunday night. She's doing a really good job. She's getting right with us. She's shucking the corn. You know what they would say in Oklahoma. <laughs> Turn with me to First Corinthians chapter 16. First Corinthians chapter 16. Verse, uh, verse 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men or act like men, be strong, that all things be done with charity or love. I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus and that it is the first fruits of a chia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. They have addicted themselves. A lot of, a lot of addictions today. A lot of addictions today. That people have, they're addicted to this, they're addicted to that. And most of the addictions are terrible, and you need deliverance to get free from those addictions. But there is one addiction that God wants to give you. There is an addiction that God wants to put into you that you get addicted to the things of God. Miss, I think of Miss Kathy and, and she works in Dope Town and so we were driving through Dope Town and coming to Fredericton. And so you were in Dope Town today? So and that's a that's not just driving back to your place, that's driving that's a that's a long, long how how long? That's an hour it's an hour from my place. It's an hour from Fredericton. Okay, an hour. None of us drove an hour to get here. But she does this all the time. Why? You'd, you'd think she's addicted to this place. Well, there is an addiction. Why? Because yes, 
Because we're, we're there, you know, there's love is an addiction. And when, when you get into where the love of God is, um, you get addicted to it. You feel the love. You feel the compassion. You feel his heart. You see it in the people around you. And you find yourself loving them and caring about them. It says they were addicted to the ministry of the saints. Why? Because the saints need some ministry. I know Miss, Miss, Miss Kathy, she bakes a lot for people, not just me. When the weather gets cold, it would be tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I checked the weather. I have this app on my phone. See? I wouldn't want to be too tired for church tomorrow. What? I wouldn't want to be too tired for church tomorrow. <laughs> oh, Friday. No church tomorrow. Right, 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 right. right. I'm addicted. Yeah, it's a holiday tomorrow. Okay. Can't, I can't work on the holiday. <laughs> You'll get some. Addicted. Everybody say addicted. addicted. Are you addicted? I mean, honestly, are, are you addicted to the ministry? Yeah. Are you addicted to this place? Yeah. I mean, it's just like you just can't. It's hard to stay away. Yeah. I don't want to stay away. Ever and Cecile were gone for a while, but they, they got re-addicted. Yeah. And it's just so awesome to, to have them here because they minister to us. They say, no, we minister to them. No, they minister to us. They minister to us. So there's an addiction that that's the father's business. A lot of people aren't too concerned about the father's business, and if he's not, if we're not concerned about his business, he can't be. But we really want him to be concerned with our business. Lord, you know, take care of my business. He says, well, "What about my business?" Yeah. Sam hardly ever misses a service. Hardly ever. And Christos, another one. Bill's another one. Very seldom ever miss a service. I'm not saying you, you, it's, you know, it's okay to miss a service if you, know, if you really need to, but, but again, sometimes uh, we had this lady, her name was Patty Hernandez, and she was uh, the executive secretary for Bob Yandy in, in their church of about 7,000 people in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And uh, I had invited her husband, Bobby, to come down and preach. And so Bobby would come down, he'd bring his wife down, and and then we have a, a small church, you know, maybe about, about the size of this church here. And uh, uh, they started coming down, and, and uh, sometimes they just just miss the service and just come on down just to see what was going on down where we were at. And uh, uh, and so one day, I remember she, Patty said to me, she said, I'm sitting in Grace Fellowship. But the, the, this Bobby Indian is a man that he was such an amazing the office of the teacher, I mean, it was just this revelation now. It's just all oh, amazing to hear that man speak. And she says, I'm sitting under him. I'm his executive secretary. And I'm thinking, I wonder what Pastor Biden's doing down in McAllister. I wonder what they're doing down there. She said, I found my heart was down there. And so they packed up and they sold everything and they moved down just to help. Why? Because they were addicted. I mean, they had they had they, they, they had a maiden of shape up there. I mean, you talk about about prestige and, and honor and recognition and and she could sing and she could teach and and they just wanted to come down and just just sit there and just be with us because they 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 they, got, they became addicted. Why? Because the the father's business wanted them there. I have sat in service, I mean, I've, I've been in hundreds of services with Brother Hagen over the years, especially in the, in the classroom. And I have heard him talk to us ministers about uh, uh, other people in the ministry and how uh, uh, God would tell them to do something, or something he wanted them to do or some place he wanted them to go. And if they chose not to, invariably there was, it, you know, they, they didn't want to do the father's business. And invariably, uh, 
bad things would happen. It would, it's not that God would do it, but they opened up the door for the devil to attack them, and he would do it with a vengeance. I remember this, him telling this one story, this one lady, uh, the, the, the Lord had spoke to the husband. He was a pastor, a successful pastor, had a nice church, great church. And the Lord says, I want you to go to India. I will do more with you in India than I've ever done with any other man in India, if you will go. And so he told his wife that the Lord wants us to go to, go to India. She threw a fit. She said, do you know how long I wanted to have a house like I've got? Do you know how long I wanted to have a refrigerator like that? You know, with the two doors and the freezer on the bottom. Do you know the water in the door? Do you know? She refused to go. She refused to go. She died. And just a st I mean, hour after hour, he could tell stories of people that, that they wouldn't do God's business. And what happens is, is, is if you don't do God's business, uh, I'm anointed to be here. I understand. I like, I like to go speak at other little places occasionally. My heart's here. I, I, I don't think I, I could ever do it anyplace else because my grace is here. And if I went anyplace else, I would be a deep, deep doo -doo. Yeah. And I don't know how long I'd live. Huh? Say, is God that bad? No, the devil is. Yeah. But I, you know, when you, you, you learn to love the Father's business, he's asked you to do something. You know, whether it's a, just to, to, to come up here or to greet somebody. There, there's nothing greater than having a friendly congregation. I saw Krista go over and introduce herself to a, a couple the other day. Just get up and walk over and say, hi, I'm, I'm Krista, you know, and, and just wanted to welcome you. And, and uh, you know, those little things, oh, they make a difference. That can be somebody's ministry. Just saying hi to people. Well, I'm shy. I'm just too shy. Well, Jesus wasn't shy about dying for you. Amen. Okay. I'm meddling now, aren't I? <laughs> in Matthew 19 verse 16 through 30 we won't read it all Peter said this we have left all to follow you Lord what will we have we have left all to follow you what will What's in it for me? <laughs> and Jesus said, said, no man's left home or family or anything that, uh, that God will not repay. Mm -hmm. And he said he won't just repay. He'll repay a hundredfold. Yes, sir. A hundredfold. A hundred times greater if you wanted to serve God with all your heart. Wow. hundredfold. Actually, maybe we better go there. We have a couple more minutes. Wow. John, uh, John Matthew 19. Matthew 19. Now, I'm not making this up. Jesus said this. Okay? <clears throat> verse 27, Matthew 19, verse 27. Then Peter answered and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all, and have followed thee. What shall we have, therefore? What's in it for me? What's, what, what, what good is it if I follow you? you know, what, what is in it for me? That's a, that's a legitimate question. And Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, that you which have followed me into the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, you shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So there are thrones that people get to sit on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Up in heaven. Okay? And everyone that has forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or fathers, or mothers, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold. That's down here. Not tenfold, not fiftyfold, a hundredfold. Okay. And many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. So it's all about being busy about the Father's business. It's all about being busy about the Father's business. I remember Aretha Hagen. She was washing dishes one day, and she was complaining because her husband would have to be out on the road sometimes for two, three, four months at a time. 
holding revivals, you know, in different states and couldn't get home. And, and uh, she's washing the dishes and she's complaining and grumbling to God about, you know, it's not fair, it's not right. You know, my, my husband's not here with me and, and, uh, and I'm, like, I'm left all alone to raise the children. It's just, Lord, it's just not right. You see, I, I see the neighbors, they got husbands at home and they're there to help with the wife and help with the children. And she said, I heard a man's voice behind me say, I can take him to a place, you'll never see him again. She turned around, she said, who said that? It was just an audible voice. She turned, she went through the whole house. She opened every closet, every door, and she there was nobody there. And finally she went back to the scene. She said, God, that was you. That was you that said that. And she repented for complaining. She repented from her heart. Oh God, I'm so sorry. He's doing what you called him to do. He's he's doing the father's business. And now I've got to do the father's business. I'll take care of the children, okay? She's, I remember Brother Hagen saying this. She's, they, they were very poor early on in the ministry, married, and uh, very poor, and she needed a new coat, and he didn't have money for a new coat. And, you know, down in Texas, they can get some cool evenings and things like that, nothing like here, but uh, she, she needed a new coat, and he said, I, I don't have it. But he said this, if you'll stick with me, if you'll stick with me, you'll have a coat every day of the week in time. He said, now years later, she's, she's got a fur coat for every day of the week. She got seven mink coats hanging in the closet, or whatever they were, they were fancy coats. He, he, had, he, he wore Roloxes that people gave him, okay? And, and he had a, I saw it, he had a, a diamond stick pin right there and, and he was standing in front of me and he was talking to us and, and he wasn't bragging, he said, but this costs $7,000, this little pin there, seven, he said, somebody gave that to me, I didn't walk by, he said, you have to understand, people gave him Rolls Royces and different things, and he drove a Ford Pinto. No, not a Pinto, a Bronco. He said he drove a Ford Bronco. But he had them in the garage. But he said, you know, if you stick with me, all I have, well, I'm about my father's business. In the end, it's going to take us places. It's going to take us places. Why? He was just busy. You know, it's not always pleasant. The father's business isn't all. You know, changing diapers isn't always pleasant. You know, I've, I've been a father. I've had to change some poopy diapers. You know, just, just, oh, 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 just, you know. But somebody had to do it. Nobody was there. Right. But in time, you, you grow up, you know, and, and your children grow up. Busy about the, the, the father's business. And the best part is, I'll take care of your business when you're taking care of my business. That's a revelation. It's a revelation. I'll take care of your business. I will take care of your business. Amen. And sometimes I'll say to the Lord, I say that many times a day. Lord, thank you. You take care of my business. I don't have to even think about that. You take care of my business. Because I'm, I'm taking care of your business. I'm taking care of your business. Amen. That's a word to all of us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Well, the Lord is good, isn't he? Lord, so we're not, we're not ashamed of the Lord. We're not ashamed to be about the Father's business at all. Hallelujah. Okay. Well, Sam, you want to come up and do the offering tonight for us? I know you would be excited about that. It's the Father's business.
don't know what to do. And you know what, in this nature, we do fail here and there. Father, we thank you that you still hold us up. Yes. And you love us no matter what. Yes. And uh, uh, Lord, we thank you that we can uh, give to you um, tithes and offerings right from our heart, Lord. And not just from our back hands, but from the heart. Sunday night, uh, Greg will be on uh, digital. Yeah. Have a great night. Good job.